Hmm? Who is Susan Bennett? Susan Alice Bennett is an American voice actress and a former backup singer for Roy Orbison and Burt Bacharach. She is best known as the female American voice of Apple Siri personal assistant since the service was introduced on the iPhone 4S on October 4th, 2011. She was the voice of Siri until the iOS 7 update was released on September 18th, 2013. You've heard her voice hundreds, perhaps thousands of times. But who is the original voice of Siri? Her name is Susan Bennett, and she joins us from Atlanta at this time. Welcome to The Voice Choice, Susan. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. How did this begin? Tell us the story of how you became that voice. Well, in truth, I don't really know. I did some IVR recordings, interactive voice response recordings, starting in about 2005. And I was told that those recordings were going to be for generic phone uh, systems. And so six years after that, suddenly there I was as Siri. So to this day, Apple has not disclosed any information about how the voices were chosen, who chose the voices. So it's, it's still a mystery. So was this a situation of you simply auditioning along with scads of other people and they well, call you up? I was auditioning without knowing it. Let's put it that way. I had already done the recordings for some sort of, you know, <laughs> future project um, for a company that I worked with all the time. So that's why I was comfortable doing it. But I never really knew it was not, uh, you know, I was auditioning without knowing it. In other words, there would be lots of different voices that were listened to. And for some reason, they chose my voice. So here I am. <laughs> what effect has this had on your life? Well, it's uh, really uh, changed it quite a bit. Uh, when I first found out I was the voice, uh, I was kind of horrified because as voice actors, we it's to our benefit to be anonymous because we don't all have to sound one way. Most announcers are not, you know, actors, but voice actors that do a lot of different types of things change their voices. For instance, I can talk like that. Or I could talk like that. Or I can talk like that. So, uh, I was afraid that being, if I, you know, uh, verified the fact that my, I was the voice of Siri, that I would suddenly become typecast. And uh, because, I don't know, we humans like to do that. We like to put people in pockets. <laughs> and, and so right. I was a little concerned. Yeah. But uh, fortunately, with the uh, encouragement, uh, actually harassment of my husband and son, who just said, you're, a, you're crazy, go ahead and you know, tell people that, who you are. And they were right. Uh, it's after you know, mulling this over in my head for a very long time, I revealed myself as the voice. Uh, two years to the day uh, from uh, the time that Siri appeared, and that was October 4th, 2013, is when I showed up. And it was really life-changing because all of a sudden I had all of this work. I did all sorts of appearances, you know, on the Today Show and the, you know, good, you know the CNN Morning Show and uh, Queen Latifah Show when she had one and uh, all mm -hmm. sorts of things like that. And ultimately, uh, I was able to get, um, with my son's help, who lived in Los Angeles at the time, uh, wonderful agents, Wes Stevenson and Tom Lawless at Vox in L.A. And they pretty much took the situation and ran with it. And what ultimately happened was Siri created a whole new career for me. So thank you, Siri. Um, I started to do uh, speaker events. And uh, I, in my presentations, I tell people how the recordings were done, what the recordings sounded like, because they were very strange, and, uh, and how it sort of evolved into this new career for me. And I also talk about the voiceover business and, and how that goes and, uh, and a lot of different voices that I do to, uh, to show what voice acting is like. Do Siri for us. Siri who? <laughs> Hey Siri, take me to 213 Columbus Circle in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I will when I get around to it. <laughs> See, the original voice of Siri was kind of snarky. She had an attitude, mm -hmm. which is why I think people had so much fun with her because they would talk to her just to see what she would say. So, 
Yeah. Right. Sense of humor. Um, Sense of humor is I've a big part. Yeah. I've actually thanked her for um, the uh, answer before, silly things like that. It, it, is an, it, it is really a marvel of engineering what those guys did, it isn't it? It certainly is. It certainly is. Yes. <laughs> Can you explain to us what they did with those voice snippets? How did they make you fully fluent in English? Um, Everywhere. I can. How? I can tell you. It's a process called concatenation. And what that means is I did these recordings that were, the scripts were created just for sound to get all of the mm -hmm. sound combinations in the language. So this went on for months. Uh, and because of that reason, because they weren't worried about the content or the meaning of what I was saying, they were just getting sounds. And so I had to read crazy sentences and phrases like, cow hoist in the tub hut today, or schist fresh issue today, things like that. And so I read uh, phrases like that for a month, four hours a day, five days a week in 2005, July of 2005. And then the process was technicians and computers would go into the recordings, extract sounds, and reform these sounds into new phrases and sentences. And that's what ended up on all our devices as Siri's and Alexa's answers to our questions. So it, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. It, it is fascinating. It's really something. I, I take it that uh, those guys uh, are literal computer whizzes. Yes, and you have to keep in mind that they've been working on AI since about the 1960s. And so a lot of thought, a lot of preparation, a lot of work, <laughs> and a lot of uh, mm -hmm. creating went into this. We'll take a break right now for our sponsor, Shore Technologies, and we'll be back with Susan Bennett. This segment of The Voice Choice is sponsored by Shure. And this is the voice of God. Actually, I'm not God at all. I'm Eric Holloway, a voice actor. And when I want to sound my very best, I depend on Shure Microphone. It delivers the sound I want. So, how am I doing? When people find out, Susan, do they ask you to do the voice? What kind of response does the world treat you like? now that they know? Well, people are fascinated. Uh, you know, people that, that don't do voice work or don't, uh, or aren't in any of that aspect of the business, like acting or theater or, you know, um, where people use their voices in many different ways. When I say, I speak like this, and they'll say, you're Siri, you don't sound like Siri. And I say, well, how about now? You know, and they go, ah! <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. uh, they kind of freak yeah. out. <laughs> And you turned that right on. Uh, yeah. It's, it, yeah. Your background in voice goes back how far? Well, oh, boy, it's been decades now. But I started everything off as a musician. I could play the piano by ear at the age of four. And so I took piano lessons at a very young age and played music and then finally started to sing in high school and college. And I joined a mm -hmm. band and all that sort of thing. Um, I got married pretty young right after college and moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And so I started working on all the studios there. One day uh, I had sung uh, back at the, at the time when they used to do a lot of original music for commercials, which were called jingles. And uh, I would sing a lot of jingles, sometimes by myself, sometimes with a group. And one day uh, we, he, we sang a commercial and I, I wish I could remember what the product was. But after um, we finished the singing, the uh, owner of the studio said, Susan, the voice actor it, it can't come. So can you, you know, you don't have an accent. Please read this copy. And so I read it very easily. And so I was kind of going ding, ding, ding in my mind. I said, hmm, I can do this. So I got um, a voice coach and then a talent agent, and I've been doing voiceover ever since. It's gone pretty good. Yep. You gotta admit. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a very, very fortunate day for me at the studio. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's take a break for our uh, sponsor in New York, The Voice Shop. We'll come back and 
continue our conversation with the original voice of Siri, Susan Bennett. The Voice Shop is a proud sponsor of the Voice Choice Vodcast, where you get to see and hear the inspirational talent behind the microphone. Shift your voice into high gear with professional training and coaching at The Voice Shop. You can save $20 off any purchase with promo code CHOICE at checkout. Visit us at voiceshopcoaching.com. So there you see the voice shop teaches voiceover training. What is your view on vocal education? Have you had a bunch of training? Well, I sort of trained on the job. Um, And the fact that I have always loved reading, I've always loved words. I love the English language. It's, It's so precise. And of course, I grew up at a time when um, vocabulary and reading was very uh, emphasized. Now, of course, with technology taking over and everybody having th- that orientation, I don't think there's as much emphasis on uh, reading and words. But for me, uh, and I think for any future voice person, you, regardless of what the trends are, regardless of what uh, voice acting is, you really do need to have the skills. It requires certain skills. And of course with, you know, we can go behind everything now with the computers and fix everything. So it's not as intense as it used to be. <laughs> you used to have mm-hmm. to be able to get it right the first time. But mm-hmm. now um, it, it's still beneficial to you to know how to read, learn words, how to, how to pronounce things, um, learn how to approach phrases and sentences from a different point of view. Uh, You know, try to say it if you're angry, say it if you're happy. And, you know, so all of this is, you know, involves education and practice. And I really can't emphasize it enough. It will really, really help you. Well, that's a a good plug for the voice education business for sure. So let me ask you, can lightning strike twice? Do you think there's any way at all that you can one-up this, Siri? One-up Siri? Yeah. Oh, I would never do that because you know Siri's quite vengeful. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like to joke. Um, You know, I don't think so. This was a pretty big deal. Um, Siri was Mm -hmm. basically the very first virtual assistant. And uh, so it would be hard to beat that for sure. Um, but I will have to say that I've been very grateful to Siri. Uh, I've traveled all over the world thanks to Siri. And uh, so it's, it's been a very beneficial thing for me. But on the, on, at the same time, it was quite a life lesson because the fact that the, the original four Siri voices uh, were not paid because we were the first. They didn't know really what was going on. They just, they got our voices from a voice bank. And uh, so... After we had all uh, revealed ourselves, Apple decided that, oh, they wanted the voice to be anonymous, so they changed the voices right away. And the new mm-hmm. voices did get paid. Um, so good for them. I'm, I'm all for, for talent getting paid. <laughs> but, um, you know, Siri is iconic. Uh, she was the first one. It's impossible, in other words, to one-up this. Well, Lightning it would be for me. Strike twice. I mean, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure there's something else out there coming, <laughs> but I, I don't believe it's going to involve me. So for me, Siri is the big thing. Yeah. Well, Susan, I certainly appreciate you coming on The Voice Choice today and telling us that fascinating story. Um, I uh, will not be talking to you again, but I will be listening on my way home. And I oh, really excellent. appreciate you coming on the show. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> We'll see you next time. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye.